welcome. And the collective is here for your information, knowledge, and love. What we ask of you is to sit and listen. Listen to the vibration. Listen to the frequency. For it is the words that the ears will hear, but it is this frequency, it is this vibration that your essence will know and understand. So allow yourself now to connect to this frequency, this vibration. There has been much focus, much focus on your existence. Where does it sit? On what side does it sit? What questions does it have? What is out there in front of you? This world itself all of what is taking place. Many are struggling. Many are struggling with the fact that they have not the understanding of exactly what is taking place. The challenges are before them. And you have to understand, this isn't just to speak of one specific location upon your planet, one specific altercation. But it is if you were to step out of your humanness and step out above your planet and observe your planet from that point and be able to see all of the little bits and pieces that are making up your existence and seeing all of the different challenges. And it isn't just the warring actions, but the indecisions, the uncomfortableness. You see, many believe that this is a very challenging time. Many believe this has been thrust upon them for some certain reason. Many believe that there is this mm, nefarious action all in the background. There are many beliefs to what is taking place. There are many of you that understand fully what is taking place. You have an awareness of what is taking place and it is just this. It is to experience all of it. It is to experience every bit that is taking place in front of you. Why? It is to bring you to a point of finding your own truth. You see, it has been said before that what is taking place around your planet, there is truth in both sides. Both believe they are true. They are at war with one another because each believe in their own truth. Each group believes in their own truth, and that is correct. There isn't a right and there isn't a wrong. There's common ground. But it is to come to the realization of your own truth, not colored by the outside world around you, but fully embraced by you, because it is there. The truth is there. You've never lost the truth. No matter what has been taught, no matter what has been said, no matter what has been seen or heard, the truth has been with you from the point at which you incarnated into this body. And not only the truth, but the knowing of all things. But see, it is the human, it is this human experience that purposefully hides it away, purposefully forgets it, to experience the human life. <clears throat> For if you were to live in your divine essence, this I am presence in the human form from the point at which you incarnate all the way through without any challenges, without any 
disruptions, with all of it being exposed, then there is no need for this life. That's for a much higher ascended point. There's no need for the physicality. But all of the challenges, all of the distractions, all of that that is in front of you, all that surrounds you, is nothing more than to awaken you to your own truth, to find your own truth. But what do you do with that truth once you find it? Then you begin to live it. You begin to honor it. Whatever that truth is for you, that is your foundation. That is who you are in this world. <clears throat> And yes, it will be different than someone else. Someone else may have another truth and so on and so forth. But you see, when everyone, when every being upon this planet comes to the realization of their own truth, that is where unity begins. Because there's no longer a need to take one side or the other because there isn't a side to take. It's multifaceted. And so there isn't any side to take other than to find common ground. Much has been said about the consciousness of humanity rising, and it is. And why is it rising? It is because more and more individuals are finding their truth. They're finding the truth in their own existence. <clears throat> They're finding that common ground in their own existence and standing upon it. And when you do, there's no need to challenge anyone because you realize that they are living their truth and you honor that just as you honor yourself. So allow yourself some time to explore this of yourself. What do you need to do to uncover this truth? What do you need to push aside in your existence to uncover this truth? Is it just merely speaking the words of your truth and not hiding behind them? Is it going out and doing something that is in alignment with your truth where it hasn't before? It is for you to find. For each is different but allow yourself the time to find it because it's there just beneath the surface. If you have questions, please begin. Thank you so much for your presence in that beautiful opener. Kathy would like you to explain karma. Is it real? Are there any atonements or consequences for our actions in life or after death? Karma is an interesting understanding. Therefore, the belief is that, yes, karma is something that is carried on from lifetime to lifetime until you address it, clear it, and then move forward from it. <clears throat> it is an endless string of activities that must be done in order to clear one's karma so that they can then achieve some magical level. That is the belief. Where did the belief begin with humans? Karma itself is an energetic entwining. It is an energetic experience from lifetime to lifetime. But it is to be understood this way. For if you were to come into one particular life, doesn't matter which, this one, and if your sole understanding is to clear all the karma before you transition, be prepared. There will be many transitions before you finally get to the end of the karma line. Because you will not accomplish that in one lifetime or two or three. Karma itself is the simplest of actions. The thought that wasn't needed 
the hesitation that you should have done something, but you didn't to someone else, <clears throat> for someone else. It isn't the grand things that you did to someone. It isn't the mm, misguidance to someone. It isn't the misguidance to self. It isn't, you have to understand, karma is the very slightest things. It's an energetic entwining that mm. cascade from life to life. But it is only to be brought in if it serves a purpose to clear. Meaning, is it one particular life that you had an intersection with an individual and you did them wrong? You had an agreement with them and you did them wrong. Now you've held that karmic thread from life to life to life, but you've never addressed it quite correctly. You've done things to clear what you thought was the karmic line from it. But in this life, you've chosen to clear that. What is that action of clearing? Is there some hmm, magic words that you must say? Is there some modality you must take on? No. Karma itself is simply addressed of understanding that many things affect your human existence, thoughts, actions. And it is to address them through gratitude and love. That is all that is required because you have to understand it isn't just the karmic understanding. It isn't just the karmic threads on your behalf. For what you believe might be something that you have done to create karma is actually an action from somebody else's contract that you are agreeing to partake in in order for their lesson. And in that case, there is no karma because you fulfill the contractual agreement for that individual. You see, it's much more complicated than just a simple word on how to clear it. It's much more vast than that. Karma is a, a bit of a a bit of a term that should be used more for guidance than it is for atonement. Allowing it to be in your awareness so that you can look back and understand, aha, that's the point at which I should have. So allow let me to address it through my gratitude and love towards it, my unconditional love towards all of it. Not take it on as a burden of something you must shed as if it were mm, a piece of, piece of clothing. It is just merely an energetic connection to bring awareness to you during a moment that you are interacting, making a decision, having a relationship, some other aspect of your everyday life, it may come into your awareness as a vibrational force that may be there just to guide you just a slight bit, but you understand it's karma, so you go back and clear it that way by just recognizing it, not by taking on some grand mystical experience. There's enough karma to last you lifetimes. Don't be over-consumed by it. But live in a place in which you understand that it isn't there to affect you. It's there to assist and guide you to be in your awareness. Thank you for that understanding. <clears throat> Judy is holding a crystal and she felt called to this crystal. And when she picks it up, she gets goosebumps. Does it have a particular focus or mission or intention in how it would like to be utilized? It is to understand this particular crystal has an input and an output 
mm, termination. You've already sensed the energy that flows through it. You already, already sense the aspect of input and output. There are multiple understandings of mm, where to use it and how to use it. Just since it does have an input and an output, it can be used for transmutation in a very specific way. It can be used to open specific channels, energy channels throughout the body. So first, to address the body at any particular point, whether it's yourself or those that you work with, if you feel as if there's a point at which there is a bit of a restriction, there is a bit of a congestion that needs to be mm, transmutated, allow the crystal to be placed upon it, input and down, output and up, and allow the energy to be pulled through it. By doing so, it is transmuting it instantly. There is no other action that is needed. Just by you merely holding it is activating it, allowing it to be placed. For the environment that you are in, and you can utilize it very specifically the same way, but it is to understand and begin to sense, say it is a particular room you are in, and you find yourself with a bit of a chaotic energy cycle within the room. It feels a bit unsettled. Find the point at which within the room that it seems to be the most unsettled. This will be very evident as you step into it. It'll feel as if the ground beneath you begins to shift just a bit. Again, place the crystal down, input and down, output and up. Allow it to all funnel through that to begin to re-energize, rebalance, and reset the energy within the space. This can be done within a small room, large room, or even out in the environment that you are in outside. For it will be for just a specific location that you are in that you feel needs to be addressed appropriately. Fantastic. Thank you for that. So Maria recorded a podcast with a woman by the name of Sarani. And while they were talking, Maria had tears coming out of her eyes and her nose was runny and she couldn't take her eyes away from Sarani. At times, she wasn't even sure what the woman was saying. But the moment that Sarani stopped, all of that stopped as well. Can you explain what was happening in that moment, please? Well, this is has to be understood in a way that for your, what you are observing is not observing through your human aspect. You are observing divine to divine. You're observing your divine essence to one other's divine essence in unison. And what you're observing at that point is well beyond this dimensional space. It is as if you have been transported to a much higher dimensional realm though it still exists here within the third and fourth density. Energetically, though, vibrationally, though, it is seemingly much higher. And that is what you're witnessing. You're seeing the channeling coming through. And it isn't for the ears to hear, but it is for the essence to take on. So what you were feeling, what you were sensing in your physicality, was the overwhelming presence of this divine presence. Then it was equalizing. Yours and hers were equalizing appropriately. And that, in your humanness, was a bit overwhelming. And this is why the tears of love and joy and gratitude began to flow. Lovely. Thank you for that. Marie has a close friend who passed away from cancer this month, and she's suffering through a good bit of grief. Can you offer her any words of support or understanding? The action of grief. It is necessary. The vibration of grief is necessary. It is necessary for the human physical essence to process grief. 
And why is that? Because it is this aspect of physicality being mm, aligned with another physical being. It is this mm, encirclement of physical energies. And grief is what begins the soothing process because there has been separation. There has been this disconnect physically. But see, if you could mm, step aside for just a moment, what you would find is that energetic connection, that energetic alignment is ever strong and getting stronger. But through the grief process, it will take time to sense and understand that. So allow yourself to grief, but do not be harsh upon yourself because of grief. Do not sit within grief to cloud your life. Grief is a process. Grief is an energetic, physical process to clear and prepare for the reuniting energetically, purely energetically. So as you sit, as you continue in the days to come and grief comes upon you, allow yourself to shift just a bit as you're sitting within the grief energy and begin to center yourself here in your heart. First, understanding the unconditional love that you have, not only for yourself, but this individual. And understand that it is purposeful. Because you must feel it here for yourself before you can sense it anywhere else. This is the starting point to begin that reuniting of energies. As you sit here in the heart space and you allow the unconditional love to come through, Yes, you may weep and you may cry, but it isn't going to be because of grief. It's because it'll be of joy. It'll be of happiness. It'll be of love. And as you do, then allow yourself to begin to explore gratitude in the relationship for all the beautiful moments, all of the trying moments, every single moment. Allow yourself gratitude in all of it because you were there. You experienced all of it purposefully. You both agreed to share this life together as it is. And the way you honor that is through gratitude. And again, yes, emotion may come up, but it isn't because of grief. It's because of the love and the joy that was present. As you do, you begin to feel that presence around you. And that's where the true beauty begins because grief then is let aside and you are now filled with that presence. And what you're going to find is a beautiful communication that is going to open up. Signs, words, voice, all of it will open and you'll know exactly. And in that, there will be emotion, but it will be at the emotion of joy. Tears of joy and gratitude in it all. And that's where the next level of the relationship begins. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Erica had a pet squirrel named Mac, who I wrote about in my Love Notes book. Has he transitioned? And if so, has he reincarnated? Yes, he has transitioned, though incarnation has not come about just yet. There is a mm, 
playful bit of experience that is taking place at this moment the the energy is still present around present around in the environment it is guiding other swirls and other animals to this location because the understanding of what is at that location there is an energy vortex that is centered there it is one that is open to bring in all animals and allow them to experience a relationship between human an animal that they may never have a chance to experience. Max is guiding them there. Beautiful. Thank you for that. April is wondering what's happening in her house. The TV comes on by itself in the middle of the night, as do the fan and light. And then recently a picture fell off the wall that was quite secure. Is there a spirit that wishes to get in touch with them or what's happening please for there has been an energy um, shift that has taken place not only in oneself but in others within the family there's an energetic shift that has taken place and this energetic shift that has taken place has you cannot say awoken any spirits because they've already been there but it gives the signal to say, now is the time. Now is the time to communicate. Now is the time to be, yes, a bit playful. Because now hmm, there are certain individuals in the family that understand this is what spirit is. So it isn't to be frightened by it. It isn't to look upon it as being something hmm, ugly or nefarious. For you see, it isn't just family members that have transition. It is others. There are many that are trying to get not only your attention, but others within the family to begin to communicate. So as it takes place, yes, you've been asking the questions, but you have to understand if you're not fully mm, within that space of reception, meaning your shift of vibration must come up to meet that vibration that is interacting with your physical objects within the environment. They have come down in vibration to meet in that space. Allow your vibration to rise up. That's where communication begins. You can then begin to speak just as a medium does. They step up in their vibration to meet spirit as it comes down in their vibration to meet somewhere in the middle. This is what you are trying to achieve. Allow the communication to begin at that point. If you remain here at your normal vibration point, communication will not take place and the more persistent they will be to prod you to bring your vibration up. Sounds exciting. Thank you for that. So there's been a lot of horse energy going on with Will and I lately um, between our friend Candace and an interview with a well-known horse trainer recently. And then our property, which is on a horse camp with a lot of horse riders. So it seems that this is purposeful. Can you talk to us about why we're intersecting so strongly with horses and where that might lead? For it is to understand and you have this awareness, but it is to understand this aspect of the mm, horse energy, the wisdom that each horse carries into its existence. Yes, all animals carry wisdom about them. There are many that allow it to mm, move from lifetime to lifetime, uh, similar as living past lives here as a human, and then bringing that wisdom into your existence as you are once again in a human form. That you see here, it's a bit different. Not only are they drawing upon wisdom that they have accumulated for time, but the alignment to source is a bit different than most animals. This channel to the connection of source, the creator, is quite open. 
So this is why mm, the animal will understand a human well before the human understands the animal, the horse. This is why, because this connection to source and understanding all what has taken place mm, in previous lives, as far as wisdom, they read the human much quicker before they're even in presence because it is understanding the human vibration and where it is, say, on a scale. And this is assisted through source. So even up to a mile away from that particular animal, that horse, if a human is to approach that horse, they know well before they're even present. So it is to understand this wisdom. It is to explore this wisdom. For this is coming into your awareness because there is an alignment that you are going to be taking on as far as mm, horse energy, not necessarily horses themselves, but the energy they're in. And it is going to mm, shift your trajectory just a bit. Fantastic. Thank you. So Wendy was told that she sits on several galactic councils, one of which is the Multigalactic Healing and Transformative Instructional Council for the Alignment for the Human Ascension Aspect. What are some of the other ones that she serves on, please? For each of the following, you are represented as a um, liaison, human within the council. You represent yourself in the human form. That is going to be a teaching council, a healing council, an explorative council. This particular council is one that is made up with multi-galactic races as well as many, many humans. For this explorative council is one that, think of it, it sits on top of a grid very similar to your quantum field. And this grid is represented to all multi-dimensional points not to the granularity of the quantum field in this point in this time and that life and this, but more specific location, this galaxy, another galaxy, another time period. And it is then to explore into these points. It is to explore for knowledge. It is to explore for outcome. This is why this is to be addressed for many as they enter into the sleep state. There is this aspect of astral travel. Well, yes, astral travel does take place, but also you may be sitting upon an explorative type of council where as soon as you fall into the sleep state, you are left, your humanness is left behind and your aspect, your energy, is off to explore another galaxy, another time period, and then to bring back to the council all of this information. You have to understand all councils themselves share the information. You come back into your human form with a wonderful dream, and sometimes those dreams are very hard to explain. You've been somewhere that does not look anything like the world that you exist in. Take note of it. Keep a record of it. There is a technology council that you are part of as well. There is both mm, this aspect of human sitting amongst 
Arcturians and Palladians, as well as an aspect of yourself in that role of that galactic. Sitting upon that technology council, you bring forth much information into the human form. You bring knowledge back to the human form to understand different aspects of technology, not human technology. You understand crystals very well. You understand their influence on you. This is part of the technology understanding and of how crystals will be assembled in particular manners or grids to provide mm, amplification, healing, transformation. Those are just a few. There are many other, just as many humans. They sit on multitudes and their roles shift from time to time. They leave and enter into another. Do not be over-consumed of which ones are which, but understand, allow yourself to journey to either and any one of them. Thank you for that. And as far as the Exploratory Council, what kind of information are they gathering from outside the galaxy that would be important for us? And for right now, it is outcomes. How other galaxies having their own outcomes in their own mm, existent timelines. No humans involved, but different beings. And these beings are living a very, mm, shall it be said, a very similar experience but at a much higher level of technology and it is witnessing their outcomes of the use of this technology not anything that you have in your human framework to bring that information back to the council then it can be addressed and relayed to other councils so that it can be brought here to the human population fantastic thank you so talk to us about this ancient stargate network where our Earth's galactic address is 7.5.3.84.70.24.606. Do we have a Stargate network? Are we using Stargates to transport to other locations within and outside of our galaxy as human beings? To understand a stargate and how it is appropriately aligned to the human population. Stargates are in use, yes. Stargates are limited in use, limited to specific beings upon the planet. Human in general are not mm, aware of stargates. They are not aware of any mm, understanding of what a stargate is they may have come across a stargate and still yet have no understanding of what it is. And what does that mean? Hmm. There are particular points around your planet that within hmm, densely populated hmm, cities or very sparsely populated woodlands, there are, you would say, a hmm, portal of sorts that is overlaid upon a specific location a granite wall, a structure. As you approach it, it seems as if just in a particular area through the peripheral of your vision, you begin to see a shimmer, a encircling of energies, but yet you look directly upon it and it does not exist, but yet in your peripheral, you see it. This is exactly what it is. It is this aspect of a stargate. It is not active, but it is holding the resonance for that. The address you speak of is correct for this particular location. Now that address itself is mm, ever-changing as the planet itself begins to shift in its orbits as it has throughout the millennia. It will increase and decrease ever so slightly by the last decimal places, but always in track with where the location is. 
for others to be transported to and from this location. Stargates themselves are energized only by a specific means sequencing of outside application of crystals, outside applications of energies. So it is not only a physical activity, but a energetic activity that will energize just for a fraction of a moment for the um, translocation of beings. The beings that use this have been upon the planet from its inception. This is when all have come from the Mars planet to the Earth planet to populate. It is those that utilize the stargates to travel interdimensionally out into the galaxies and back. It is to understand that they are here and you will see them if you understand what you're looking for. But as you approach, the closer you get, the narrower your focus becomes, the less you see it. It is only to be seen from a distance through your peripheral. And this is why it is very hard to locate specifically. Who are we speaking with, please? This is an aspect of William's um, counterpart, the Zeta. Thank you for your presence. How many stargates are there on Earth? The current active and utilized stargates, there are approximately 573. There are a total of 2,575,000 total across the planet. They are not all activated, only the small few are activated. And so ordinary human beings could not withstand going through them, is that correct? They have to be well prepared um, energetically and physically. They would don a particular apparatus in order to sustain their physicality as they are transported. You have to understand this number of total amount, these are purposeful. They have been imparted. This has to be understood if once the Mars planet was in the process of decay, it was very difficult to transport all of humanity over to the human planet. Once the understanding of the stargates and opening of the stargates were utilized, it was then implemented across the planet to have multitudes of them that in the event of a mass evacuation of one's planet, it could be utilized to evacuate everyone simultaneously into another dimension. Wow. So is that the ordinary mode of transportation for galactic beings is by plugging in these addresses? It is not the primary mode, but it is only to be used for specific reasons. These specific reasons are for, mm, for the higher echelon of all galactic beings to transport themselves immediately. There is a need for immediate transport to and from different locations because of time-sensitive information that is required to be imparted to the human species as well as other species of other planets. The other aspect of this is for heavy payload transportation. Wowza. So why would you have them in highly or densely populated areas? It is for this aspect of immediate mm, departure. Uh, those that are aligned to it have the mm, knowledge of opening the portal it doesn't matter. It could be opened in front of you. You would not witness it being opened. The more densely populated an area is, the less focused individuals are with their own eyes of what they are seeing because there's too much to be taken in through the physical optical sensors. So everything becomes a blur. This would take place in front of you and you wouldn't even understand it. Wow. So you wouldn't see somebody just disappear. This is correct. So in the video, they were talking about, on a military base, an elevator type of thing that looked like an ordinary elevator, and there was a key inserted. So it sounds like that was a physical and an energetic process. Is yes. that what they were doing? This is correct. This is just one mode of entry into different aspects of Stargates. Wow, fascinating. Thank you for that. Is there anything else you'd like to share from your perspective? For it is to understand the human population itself is, in your vision, 
it seems to be a bit disruptive. Mm. And it is. Understand that this disruption is ultimately purposeful. Do not allow it to be over-consuming for your own physicality. Do not take it on as a challenge. Allow it to be in your awareness, but do not be frightened by it. All is appropriately aligned. All is being mm, executed just as it should be. Fantastic. Good to talk to you again. Mm, thank you. I'd like to ask either you, the Zeta, or anyone else who would like to assist us with some primary galactic alignments and source clusters, please. Mm, please continue. So Tyson's daughter, Gracie, her primary and source, please. Primary, Palladian. Source, Syria. Wonderful, thank you. And Sally? Primary, Syrian, Source, Orion. And Teresa? Primary, Andromedan, Source, Arcturian. And Teresa's son, Diego, please. Primary, Lyran, source, Syrian. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Does the collective have any closing remarks for us this evening, please? Or as you depart, as you go about your journey, as you go about the next days to come, allow yourself time to be present with self. Step away from what you are witnessing, what you are observing, what you are hearing, what you are reading. But be present with self, truly present with self. And begin that exploration of truth. Ask yourself questions. Where does my truth reside? Where is my truth? What is my truth? What do I believe for myself? Where is it? Does your truth challenge you? Do the words that come to mind challenge your physical presence? They may, and that is okay. You have to understand, this journey, this life, this contract, this existence, it doesn't matter where you are on it. You are exactly where you need to be. You've aligned all of it. That is what you need to take and understand. You've designed this life as well as all the others. Every aspect of it, every challenge, every joy, every happiness, every sadness. You've created this for yourself. You're honoring your own existence by living it. Embrace that. And when you embrace that, you find your truth. You find truly where you are in your own existence. And when you can speak that truth without hesitation, when you can speak that truth of who you truly are, this divine being, this divine essence, this I am aspect, nobody can challenge that. That is the strength 
that you have provided to yourself. And that is the strength that you need. That is the existence of why you've chosen this life. Allow that to be your guidance. Allow that to be you. Embrace yourself. Thank yourself. Thank yourself for giving you this experience of this life. You've learned so much, and there is so much more to learn. So allow the days to come to be your journey, seeking your divine truth. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your presence this evening. Thank you. And as always, the collective is here for your information, knowledge, and love.